Hey, I'm Matthias Neu, and I'd like to show you real quick when having connected to an AMS Asset Monitor in the delivery default, how to get it connected and set up correctly for the customer network or an integrated network where the system needs to be made available from. So for that, we're going from the dashboard view after having connected to the Asset Monitor directly into the system section. And you see an overview here that the measurement section is shown as um, the internal information of the box, inner temperature, supply voltage. We're seeing the time um, as it is stored and, and running inside of the asset monitor as there is a real time. But we also see the LAN integration uh, setup, the ACN setup, and the OPC UA setup. And with going into the configuration section here, you see that we have a basic description of just the naming of the box. But from network uh, IP4, um, settings we're able to set up the box to be obtaining an address automatically from the network through DHCP or we can use a specified IP address which is a common use case from my point of view either for the LAN port which is a lower one port at the three different uh, TCP IP connections and um, RJ45 connections that the box is providing or the ACN setup which is the upper two ports that are switched together inside for daisy chaining boxes together from network connectivity perspective. So you see that these two parts of the asset monitor box, the lower network connection part um, and the upper two parts or connectors can be handled different way with different IP addresses for being integrated into different networks, but finally providing the same data of information. It's just the speed that is limited to 100 Mbits for the upper two uh, RJ45 TCP IP connections and one gigabit for the lower one. So uh, further to that, we're having DNS settings um, can be automatically addressed or if we are using a DNS server it can be entered over here. We are also having OPC UA set up especially for those uh, users that like to get data out of the asset monitor and driving it out of the box. From OPC UA perspective you are able to set up everything required uh, with first enabling the OPC UA interface and if required we are able to allow anonymous access without any password uh, set up so we can easily do so and from policy perspective it's just dependent on the uh, client that is receiving the data and what is required from that we're typically using none or <clears throat> you can also activate all of them if you want to and from IP address perspective we're also having opportunities for whitelisting so just to add IP addresses that are allowed to connect for limiting the amount of connections um, that can access the OPC UA data within a network. So if it is a point-to-point -point server to uh, <clears throat> server to box connection, it could be just one fixed IP address to be entered in here. And last but not least, we're having time synchronization opportunities and time setup opportunities. So the first opportunity is to choose your time zone, which is Europe for me, and we can activate that to be synchronized by a server, an NPT server. So with doing so, we, are, we need to enter the IP address of the server over here to get connected to that. But if we don't have a server available, we can also use our local PC time to get in sync with the device itself. And that's what I'm pressing right here. So uh, I guess my box was one minute out of sync and we are, you see that it has been changing now. So it's manually date and time set up from here. And finally, after having this set up, we can easily press the save button to store all the setup into our asset monitor and making it available from there. So uh, reloading the page and you see that everything is fun. So from firmware perspective, if you need to go for firmware updates, you're having a button over here. So just pressing here, but not applying that. So for newer versions of firmware, they, it can be easily updated from the box with just pressing the firmware button. Well, last but not least, we're having a restore button and a backup button. And with pressing the backup button, it allows you to do a configuration file setup or backup of the whole box with dashboard, uh, char charms configuration, asset configuration, output logic configuration. So all the configuration parameters are stored within the backup. So with just pressing the backup button, you see that there is a backup stored to your machine to the download section or 
So and what we can do from there now finally is go into the restore section if we have a file that we can restore we are just pressing this uh, browse and go to the same section download so I can easily choose one of the backups that I applied open it and restore it to my asset monitor and it responds with restore configuration successfully.